Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being part of the family and thank you so much for loving Value Farm. Well, we are here in Mukono district and we're in Mashambani Dairy Goat Farm. Oh my God, I'm really super excited to really bring for you guys this content and share with you guys other experiences with other farmers who are really doing goat farming. And this is dairy farming. You guys have been asking for dairy farming content. We are right here and of course we are here to interact with our friend who is here and my co-director on standby. Please come and join us so that you can say something, say hello to the people and introduce yourselves. Well, hello, my good people. I have to tell you, I'm so excited to be here. In fact, we came to pick up our goats earlier this morning. Mm -hmm. I've been communicating with my friend here and this was unplanned. So that's why we're still wearing the same clothes. So forgive us. <laughs> exactly. But we could not go back to Kampala without visiting this amazing farm. And I have to tell you, you guys know my name is Grafton, co-director of Value Farm, but I'm not important. The most important person here. Yes. Please introduce yourself to the people. Hi, I'm Purity. Thank you so much for having us here and having you in my farm. This is Mashambani Diary Goats Farm. We do street tree diary goats, and as you can see in the background, that's all we have. Uh, there are three chambers and they are all full of diary goats and strictly females here. The males are outside. Karibuni sana. Over to you, Grafton. <laughs> <laughs> you must you welcome. Know, like any true female women, mm -hmm. they kick the men out, they <laughs> over the house, you know, but the ladies are back there feeding mm -hmm. and it's for their own good. Now there's a reason that they kept indoors, right? We don't do, we treat these goats very similar to how you would treat uh, a Frasian cow, so to speak, or any real dairy cow. You don't want them out there free ranging, exerting energy. You want them relaxing, stress free, eat as much as they want. That way they can produce the best quality of milk. Is that not correct? Very correct. Yeah, so because you. of that, that's why they stay in. But I have to tell you guys, this is a very specialized structure. So at some point we're gonna give you guys some of the B-rolls. We'll yeah, hopefully sure. be able to get some footage so you can see. But please, why don't you tell these folks how you got your start? Why did you get into dairy goat farming? Okay, uh, thank you so much. And uh, we started uh, dairy goats uh, not as a commercial project. It started as a domestic um, project where we wanted goat's milk to feed our children who are intolerant to lactose. And uh, we had only two goats, two females and uh, one male. Now, when they kidded, uh, we had a lot of milk, which we didn't even know what to do with. So we asked our neighbors who wanted milk, and they were so excited to have it. <laughs> and uh, demand started shooting, wow. and we saw an opportunity. We went for it, and that is what you can see today. Of course, the journey doesn't start only with two goats and the hens with two goats. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a lot of inflows of goats. But I would basically say that uh, we went through like any other product cycle. There are ups and downs. We shot 124 goats. Uh, you know something called telephone farming? Yes. Before we knew it, we won 24 goats. Wow. They died further. We were left with the 20 goats. And from 20 goats in 2017, this is what we have. From wow. The 20 goats. Now, you know, there's a lot of novice farmers out there. There's a lot of Kampala slayers out there. <laughs> <laughs> who want to call themselves farmers and name only. But there's a lot of people that are watching this video from all over the globe. Explain to them what a telephone farmer is. Just give them a brief synopsis of what it is to be a telephone farmer. Yes, a telephone farmer is that person who stays away, away from the farm 
and just uses his communication, his or her communica communication gadget to know what is happening in the farm. Definitely you get the reports mm. and the reports they want you to hear, not what you want to know. Mm. So you are very comfortable in the city, you are very comfortable in your villages, elsewhere away from your project and you are controlling everything on phone. That is how it works. Telephone farming, never a way to go. Wow. Wow, that is really so true. We've always emphasized to our followers out there that management, as long as you don't involve yourself or participate with the workers of the farm, you're going to get really very frustrated. Because if you're to just make calls and just feel like, you know, I can't be at the farm, let me trust my manager, let me trust my workers, let me trust my, my relatives with everything at the farm, and you're not on ground, guys, things are going to fall apart. So you need to be really on ground. That is what it is. And I'm one of the testimonies. I saw it go down. But definitely I had put up uh, the first structure which you can see on the background. Mm -hmm. uh, you shall see them much later. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was looking at the investment I had put. My 30 million sinking in the village. <laughs> so I had to make a drastic decision. Mm. It's either I continue earning the salary which is a cycle. Mm -hmm. I yeah. wouldn't want to call it cycle of poverty, but mm. it's cycle of dependence. Mm. Or I decide to go it live. True. Risk it, pledge. Mm. If I swim, well and good. If I sink, I'm also a, a statistic. So here I am. I didn't sink much. I floated a little bit. And I think soon or soonest, I will be doing marathons. Wow. That's amazing. Now, you know what, guys? Mm. What I hope you guys take away from this like us at Value Farm, we've had our ups and downs. We've taken some severe body blows, let me tell you. Mm. Particularly when it comes to the people that you leave in charge. You have to treat this farm as if not just a way for you to feed your family, but as if it's a part of your family. Because Absolutely. if you neglect your family, guess what? Ultimately, things are going to go awry, right? You don't want to be an absentee farmer, just like you do, wouldn't want to be an absentee parent, right? So, anything else you want to add? Because this rain seems like it wants to it's come down. It wants to come down. <laughs> I just wanted to also, for Puri, to really advise our fellow farmers out there who want to start farming, dairy goat farming. What are the real advantages of dairy goat farming? How do people really benefit from it? Okay, I'll just uh, speak from my own experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you must have a purpose as to why you want to do a specific type of goat. If you're doing meat, you know why you want to do the right. meat. Mm -hmm. uh, there are those even who do far from it and skin, and then there are those ones of us who are doing dairy goats. Uh, why I went to dairy goats, I wouldn't want to tell you it was very purposeful mm. uh, commercially. It was very, very individualistic because I really wanted supplies for my children. Mm. But uh, what I found in the dairy goods sector and what I'm telling the young people is that the beauty about it is that the return on investment is that quick. Invest in your 800,000, get your one liter of milk every day or get your two liters of milk every day. And within three months, you've recovered your capital. The 600 you put in, you've recovered it. Of course, there are many other investments along the way. You have the structures and the rest, but it is one of the animals which will show you uh, a flow, an inflow, which will give you an inflow that you are assured that whichever way, I'm getting somewhere. Mm. I'm not stuck. Mm. Well, um, the only thing you have to know is that uh, dairy goat is a full commitment. Mm -hmm. It's as sensitive because it's an hybrid or exotic, whatever they call them, goats mm -hmm. from South Africa. Yeah, true. <laughs> Even if it comes from Ireland or Poland, it is a South African goat. Mm -hmm. uh, the environment is not the same, so they are quite sensitive to small issues, uh, changes, abrupt changes of mm -hmm. the environment, too much sunshine. You also have issues of worms infestation. Mm -hmm. You have sets of flies and uh, mm -hmm. other issues, especially for us who stay next to the lake. Mm -hmm. But uh, basically, feeding is automatic. You would want to do supplementation because you draw out every day, you're mm -hmm. milking it every day, mm -hmm. but the supplementation is much cheaper compared to what you do with your um, uh, layers, chicken yeah. layers, yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, the returns are higher. Mm. Now, you also acknowledge that uh, it's giving you milk, it's giving you uh, droppings, which you use as fertilizer, mm -hmm. but it is also multiplying the kids a potential money. Mm -hmm. You sell your kid, the lowest you can sell a kid which has just been weaned is 500,000. Wow. 
So you see, it is a direct income within one year you are feeling it. Yes, mm -hmm. I've invested. True. But then, as we said, if you're investing on a diary goat, be present. Mm -hmm. It's also another kid in your family. Mm. Now, you know what's amazing? You actually mm -hmm. touched almost all of the main keystones. Yeah. But guys, what you have to keep in mind when it comes to this type of farming, right? You know, I think the number one misnomer about getting into the farming business, everybody think the moment they start to research farming, they get a little bit of money mm. farming. The first thing they think about is poultry farming. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with poultry farming, but unless you have the capital that will sustain you for at least six months plus, you're going to suffer. And what, what our colleague just told you, literally, you don't need too much capital to start, right? Especially sure. when you're starting on a smaller scale. At time, you can grow, right? And you can definitely use the money you're going to be getting from your, from your offsprings to continue to develop your compound. You don't need to build a 300 goat structure right out of the gate, you know? As your profit grow, your compound will grow, mm -hmm. right? Grow. Sure. Your pins will grow. So it's wonderful. It's a wonderful entry point. Now, what I personally like about dairy goats, mm -hmm. it truly is the ultimate multi-purpose goat, right? You have your milk, you get your fertilizer, you have your offsprings, but you also have your meat. Mm -hmm. You know, many people don't think about that because at the end of the day, <laughs> when you're ready to take that, that goat out of production, you're not going to throw it to the wolves. No. Right? They're very sweet, okay? <laughs> the milk, the meat from dairy goats, I've experienced it with Gala, I've experienced it with the Togans. The meat is delicious. So you can definitely get your milk, you get your fertilizer, and you get everything else. And on top of that, you get to keep the meat or you get to sell the meat, mm -hmm. right? So those are added benefits you're not even thinking about. And as long as you take care of the goat well, financially, it's going to reward you for your effort. Right? How many of you have like 25 cows at your compound, mm. yet you broke all the time? <laughs> you know? In this instance, you could have five, six, seven goats, yet you have daily potential for income. I think that's a win for the goats. That is so true. Like, guys, I should really testify. When we came here, we took some goat milk. It was uh -huh. my first time really having the goat milk. I should tell you guys, it's really very nice. <laughs> it is really so, so nice. I really love it. So now, if you go back to the supermarket, if, oh my God. you see standard milk and uh -huh. you see goat, goat milk. milk? I will definitely go for the goat milk. And it is called NutriFit That's correct. goat's milk. Yeah. Oh my it is God. also NutriFit goat's uh. yogurt. Yeah. Wow, that is All really... Curry force, we call them C4 uh -huh. or K4, uh -huh. and other higher outlets yeah. in Kampala. Just look for the goat's milk and goat's yogurt. There's only one, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's, it's, the branding is perfect. Mm -hmm. Remember Neutral Fit. Remember our friend here. Uh -huh. Remember this wonderful establishment, the effort that we put into it. Let me tell you guys this. When we discovered this place, mm. The first time I spoke to my friend here, we were on the phone for almost three hours. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we're here on the ground is because, you know, at Value Farm, we always preach sharing. Mm -hmm. Sharing of information, sharing of ideas, making sure that you do not leave your fellow aspiring or even existing farmer behind. Mm -hmm. And so she's definitely a true, kind-hearted, hardworking, Very. and dedicated farmer because when you get to this compound, Mm -hmm. There's no shortcut that's been taken in order to get to this level. So on behalf of us at Value Farm mm -hmm. and everybody who's actually watching out there, we want to say thank you. Congratulations. Well done. Mm -hmm. And personally, NutraFit yogurt is one of the best. Mm -hmm. There are multiple flavors, mm -hmm. right? You have your plain option. And for those of you who want vanilla, it's also there with a little hint of sweetness. But goat milk is meant to be have, to be had what? Raw? at its natural state, so that all of the benefit that come with drinking that goat milk can still be beneficial for your gut health. For those of you that cannot drink regular cow milk, mm -hmm. neutral fit is here for you. <laughs> <laughs> that is, by the way, value addition, yeah. That is really value addition. We always preach to you guys that you shouldn't be just a farmer. I do not add value to and what you have. open-minded. Exactly. So if you think maybe you have only the dairy goats and you want to sell only milk, guys, there's something you can do more 
onto that. That's why our friend is really doing the yogurts there for you and you should go and purchase them. And of course, I'm really super excited to be here. I wanted also to also throw some light on the feeding of these goats, like the grasses that you plant, because there are some other people out there who want to start the dairy goat farming, but they should be prepared. They should know what grasses should I really plant before I start Perfect. the dairy goat farm. So Perfect. what have you planted here? Yes, um, I would have, have to say that uh, initially when you're starting you really don't have to struggle so much with the grass because these goats are serious eaters, they eat anything which is edible <laughs> really? and uh, they, they will even select for themselves what they want to eat. But uh, when you start becoming more commercial, you start uh, mm. expanding, you want to have uh, food security, just mm -hmm. like human yeah, beings true. need food security. Mm -hmm. Drought hits hard and natural grass dries mm -hmm. up, so what do you plant? For whole season, we have a regime called Desmodium. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a jack bean. Mm. We also have lab lab or very lab nice. Papa. And then uh, you can also supplement in any other, like your beans, your soya, if you have extra dry matter. Mm. Wow. On the other side, on the grasses, you have a super nepia, what mm -hmm. they call pak chong. Yeah. They don't love it so much. Goats are more of a climbers so they mm. really like something they have to select for. Yeah, true. And then uh, you have um, bomber rods. That's true. And then uh, then we have our uh, molato, mm. okay. our carrier. Okay. And uh, of course you have to do other, other kind of foods like uh, silage. So you have to process your sugar grays and with your uh, maize, with your jack bean, you mix them and then you store them. Like see? you can see in the blue tanks, there's a lot of stuff stored there. Okay. And then uh, at this juncture, because we have some sunshine, mm -hmm. we are trying to process hay. Mm -hmm. And we process our hay from boma roots. Awesome. Because uh, we have done a plantation of boma roots. Boma roots, down okay. There. Yes. Yeah. So we are now processing it in readiness mm -hmm. for the wet season, which we anticipate to be in a month, yes. a month time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yes. So always be ready for eventualities. Okay. Now, I have to tell you, you know, just to listen to you rattle off those different type of feeding options, right? Mm -hmm. People might think you were like a natural born farmer, but what did you do before farming? Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting question, yes. <laughs> I have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was born in a rural village mm -hmm. and I grew up like any typical kid and I uh, went to University of Nairobi for my first degree social work mm -hmm. and that was way in 1994-98. Mm. Okay. Then I came to Uganda to do to follow my husband, my love of my life awesome. mm -hmm. and uh, I got my first job as a community worker. Well, I think I was business oriented. It didn't mm. go very well with my. <laughs> with my I was mm. not seeing figures, mm. so I went back for a postgraduate uh, diploma in management, and I landed a marketing job. I'm a chatterbox, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, because I was not fully qualified, mm. they, they, I think they took me in because uh, probably I was so passionate about tea, which I grew up with, mm -hmm. and I decided to huh, prove myself. I went for CIM, Chartered Institute of Marketing, mm. okay, and I graduated with a professional postgraduate diploma. Then uh, I felt it wasn't enough. I was still doing marketing, but I, I think it. I think I just needed something, something mm. more pushy. So um, I went for MBA, finished it very successfully in twenty fourteen. We 2014. are not working. We are not working. <laughs> <laughs> In I finished my MBA, uh -huh. but the day I graduated from Arusha, Mo, I mean Moshi, Tanzania, mm -hmm. Arusha, yes, I came straight, wrote my resignation letter. I wanted to be self-employed. Wow. And uh, I left the tea export business mm -hmm. to start a private business, and I started on solar. So if you look on the roof, mm -hmm. you'll solar see solar everywhere. panels. Solar is we'll get that in yeah, solar for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I started my business, but as fate would have it, who says that all businesses have to succeed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was beaten to pulp. Mm -hmm. And well, <laughs> raise your head, move. Mm -hmm. I moved. That's when I sat and remembered, hey, I have a project dying. I've been a telephone farmer all through. I've been investing on a hole, mm -hmm. sinking the money. Why don't I also try this? 
end, I packed my bags and 2018 to be precise, mm. I settled on that mansion of mine. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll show you the mansion <laughs> You'll see the mansion as, as you move on. Mm. Very modest yes, mansion. Yes, modest. And I've never turned back. Now, I just so. want to say this. I know Tina's going to ask you the same question, so I'm just going to let you ask mm -hmm. because there are so many people out there. There's a stigma about being a farmer. Please, partner, take it away. Let me tell you, an educated farmer mm. moves an inch higher. Whew. I'm not saying that all farmers are educated, but I'm sure a farmer, a farmer who has uh, done some books here and there is able to calculate a lot of risks and mitigate before they hit him or her. Mm -hmm. Definitely the levels of exposure, I'll tell you, the internet is blast with a lot of information. True. Uh, a farm like this would want a residential vet. Mm -hmm. But here I am, I read my books, I consult in the various forums mm -hmm. where even uh, everybody is. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I have an issue, I'll discuss it in the mm -hmm. forum. Mm -hmm. These are some of the advantages of having done your books and then you come to farming fully, fully uh, and knowledgeable or aware of what you want to do. Wow. But there is that misconception that oh, farmers are poor. Farmers never <laughs> went to school. Yeah. Oh, law and beyond. Preach. True. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Farmers are the people who did all the books and they have seen all over the world. They have gone through cycles and said, at the end of the day, farming is the best. Wow. But do it when you are focused, when it is a passion. Wow. Yes. Get oh, out of your God. offices, come and uh, explore nature. And you are eating what you want, you grow what you want. Mm -hmm. You sleep how you want. There is nobody <laughs> going to stop you because you overslept or because you underslept. Mm. No, it's your business. Focus oh on God. what you want to do. Beautiful farmers out there. Degrees are running after goats. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Oh my God, I'm really so speechless right now because this is what we really preach out there and getting it from someone who has been all over the place who has tried so many businesses to what she is doing right here i'm speechless i don't have much and to i say. also want to add uh, that uh, people believe that they can retire and come and do farming mm. Mm -hmm. that's also a very big misconception mm. talk about it True. yes that now, farming is only farming for the old is capital intensive and when i talk about capital intensiveness is if you're doing a commercial farming then you have to push in money mm -hmm. and you are not going to retire and your mega retirement benefits is what you're going to push mm -hmm. you are going to sink it there import your goods from south africa bring all the expertise build your structures and you deplete your savings now oh god what of if those goods go haywire mm -hmm. and <laughs> farming is that crazy Today all these goats are standing here, mm -hmm. tomorrow an outbreak will come mm -hmm. and they are all gone. Where mm -hmm. do you restart? Mm -hmm. So it's always good to start your farming when you have another enterprise or you are doing something more active. Mm -hmm. True. Farming is not a retirement job, it's a full-time job. Again. Yes. Now, I got to tell you guys, you know, I like to think, you know, I'm, I'm not a genius, but mm -hmm. I like to think I have slightly above average intelligence. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, we are in the presence of greatness. <laughs> and there's nothing more appealing uh -huh. than to surround yourself with people that you consider to be smarter than you. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's always good to, because you are the, the company you keep, okay? Now, I just want you guys to think about this, right? Me and myself went to school. I always like to tell everybody I'm a retired banker. I've traveled, I've been all over the place. But at the end of the day, if this is good enough for Bill Gates, if this is good enough for some of the top 25 of the wealthiest families in America, made their fortune in farming, farming. or farming related value addition branches, then it's good enough for me. And, and the, you need some energy, right? To get into farming. You don't wanna get in when you're 75. Exactly. You want to invest exactly. early, right? Yes. You want to get in now, you build your portfolio, you diversify your exposure to loss, as my friend just mentioned, and then you, this is a full-time commitment. Yeah. And we always tell you guys, if your partner don't support you in this venture, 
You got to think about your future. You got to think about your family. You got to think about your legacy. You know, you can hold on to your paycheck all you want. But you know what happens when you work for a paycheck? The same way you have to wait for somebody to give it to you, that company or that person can just take it away. But when you have your project, mm -hmm. it's yeah. yours. You're going to get in, get out of it what you put into it. And so, as I'm seeing here, you put in a lot. You sacrifice a lot. Mm -hmm. Both time, energy, passion, patience, and of course, neutral fit at every major supermarket here in Uganda. You'll find it. You, we're going to leave her number down below. You'll be able to call and reserve. Supplies are limited. Okay? So be ready because the production ultimately will go up. But we know you guys are going to support Neutral Fit as a brand, as a company. They're growing and the best CEO alive. And there it goes from me. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. Right very yeah. modest. Exactly. But we wanted to actually let you guys know. <laughs> exactly. So welcome. Yeah, thank oh. you so much. Purity <laughs> here, Neutral Fit Uganda. <laughs> yes. And even before we end the video, you know, most people really want to join this farming and they say maybe the market is not available for mm. like what's been if I, if, if I started the farm. How am I going to market my milk? How, am I, how did you break into the market with dairy goods? Well, that's an interesting one, but it is one of the cheapest way of marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, marketing of dairy goods is by word of mouth. Mm -hmm. It's a C to C, mm -hmm. and it is just as automatic. You've come today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely, I know after this video is posted, mm -hmm. I'll be having enough calls to respond. Exactly. <laughs> and the people who taste the milk will go and talk about it. Mm -hmm. You talked about how sweet the milk how is. How sweet the milk is. No, you are already a recruited <laughs> I am. client. I am. Already. A convert. Yes. So it's, uh, it is that, it's that, it moves, mm. it's contagious. But definitely after we have uh, done enough of the farm setting, mm. I'm sure we shall be having extra resources to do food blast advertising and the rest. But for now, I'll rely on you. Okay. And wow. uh, everybody who comes along and will ever taste the product. Now, here's the thing, right? So mm. now, I mean, the, I think to, to, to rephrase, to get a more detailed answer, right? If somebody were to start in dairy goat farming, is it difficult to find a market? That's the question. And uh, I will say yes mm -hmm. and uh, no. Okay. Yes, if you are not keen in networking uh -huh. and to know who wants the milk. Mm -hmm. Because I will not lie, it is seven times, eight, eight times, seven to eight times more expensive than, than the cow milk. Cow milk. Mm. Yeah, true. So you must have a reason as to why you are spending the extra coin mm -hmm. to get a liter of goat milk mm -hmm. instead of getting the eight or eight or seven liters <laughs> for the mm. cow milk. Right. So there must be a reason behind it. Now, why is it not hard? Mm. It is you now to identify that special target group mm -hmm. who you want to market your products to. And that group is too much in Uganda. It's a lot. It is too much. We have the expatriate community. That is true. Mm. And in the expatriate community, actually, you start with the Indian community. Mm. They are very, very good with goat milk. Mm. Then you, you go to the European community, and uh, there are very many in Kampala. You didn't even want to count them. It's the biggest population. And what will shock you most? Avantu mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. They have understood the beauty about bringing up their children with goat's milk. Mm. They protest tested it first, they tried it, they have seen wonders in it. <laughs> so I'm telling you, just giving you an example of the people you focus on, but the market is life. You know, you are, I'll open. also mention that uh, uh, goat's milk is very special in the special children's nutrition, mm -hmm. especially uh, autistic children. Mm. I'm not a doctor, I'll not talk so, so much about it, but it is something which somebody needs to explore. Many people who have issues with their diabetes, high blood pressure, they are diet restricted, mm -hmm. they are allowed to take goat's milk. So you can see the market is there. It is how you explore it. That's actually so amazing. Um, we don't want this video to be three hours. <laughs> so we guys, have a lot. <laughs> all I can tell you, mm. I just want to wrap this up by saying the following. The market exists. Your customer base is there. But the only thing you have to do, you have to give them a reason to come get your product. And how do you do that? First, you produce. But even before you start producing, you start with your outreach. 
you start with your friend network, your pastors at church, people that you know. You talk, you open your mouth. You don't want to be a lazy farmer. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be a reactionary farmer. You want to be proactive. You need to scream, let the world know what you're doing. And of course, if you make it, they will come. Uh, could I conclude on this? Mm. As you try, I'm welcoming you so heartily to the goat's milk world. Uh, but when you enter this industry, it's a special plea. Uh, the goat's milk is a special dietary supplement. And as such, it needs to remain organic, natural. Mm. Let me even say the word natural because organic uh, certification is required when you talk about organic. But uh, I would seek the new entrants to be very morally upright. I'm not saying I'm an angel, but that milk will need to remain raw. It needs no preservation. Mm. You don't need to add anything to the milk to keep it preserved. Lose it if you have to lose it, but keep it natural and raw so that the buyer can know exactly what they need to do with it. Otherwise, any adulteration, it's more poisonous than any other product mm. you have seen in the world. It doesn't need any additions. Just keep it raw and keep it clean. That's it. That's just my request to any new entrant to Diary Goods. Wow, this was amazing. Yes. Tina, I'm partner. speechless. I am, add? and I've really learned so much. <laughs> I don't want this to be a really long-winded video, uh -huh. but we should really definitely come more often here and also learn so that we can be able to inspire other people there, motivate people who want to start dairy goat farming but i really appreciate you so much for allowing us to come here for giving us a cup of tea before even we started mm. the video <laughs> and of course going to take us on a tour on the farm i'm yes. really really super happy and i hope you guys have really enjoyed this video in case you really feel like you have any questions anything please leave them on the comments down below so that we can definitely get i know she'll be watching we shall also give get her contact on the description we shall link everything that her information on the description so that you can reach out to her but if in case you have any comments any suggestions anything any thoughts just leave them down below so that we can also interact with you guys but really appreciate you guys so much if you have watched this video up to this moment you guys are gems <laughs> you're the real farmers here but we really appreciate you guys so much if you haven't already also checked out our social media platforms we have instagram that is value farm ug facebook value farm TikTok value farm just go check out the behind the scenes the clips that we post in there so that you can learn one or two things from there and also do not forget to tell a friend to tell a friend because we are here sharing is caring we are here to share all the knowledge with you guys till next time bye, bye.